John Sheard was a longtime friend, certainly. He was also the music director for Stewart's Vinyl Cafe Touring Orchestra. You know that sound, right? He played with the band for 18 years, and John Sheard joins me live here in studio. Boy, you must have some stories to tell. Yeah, I have some stories, and uh, <sighs> the nice thing about Stewart is that the stories are all printable. You can repeat them in mixed company, and, you know, that was one of Stewart's things. He's no bad words, uh, you know, even slightly bad words any B words or any, you know, he just wouldn't stand for it because he felt that was a, a betrayal of his, his audience. And that he, was, yeah. you, you were there with him live. So many people yes. were either listening to, you know, Vinyl Cafe on the radio or they were reading his books or like myself, I was a student of, of Stewart's way back when at Ryerson when he taught me to love radio. Uh, but you sat in that, sat with him in audiences of thousands of people hearing those stories again and again. What was he like up on stage and then afterwards when people would come up obviously wanting to greet him? Yeah. Well, uh, the thing that uh, people I don't think know necessarily about Stewart is that he started out as a total neophyte. You know, he was not an entertainer, he was a writer, and that's what he did. And, uh, you know, when we started out with him, Chris Whiteley and I, who's a great singer, songwriter, uh, and I started out touring with him in 97. We were doing the Midwest. And he, you know, after getting his feet slightly wet after a couple of shows, he decided he'd like being an entertainer, and he was just, yeah. he became the biggest ham. <laughs> Did he was he a ham really? bone. Yeah. You know, that's what I loved about him. And uh, he, his thing on stage was, uh, you know, it, it sort of evolved after every show, and it ended up, at the very end, he was so many hand movements, he would have this, this larger-than-life kind of extending his arms and, and spinning around, and, you know, people, unless you had been to one of his big concerts, you wouldn't know that, if, because mm -hmm. he had this dichotomy that the studio shows which alternated with the live shows, you yeah. know, what was presented on air, and they were totally two different people. There was a steward, very controlled, everything was scripted. Right. And, oh, we're going to play a song by a, one of my favorite people, you know. And then <laughs> yeah. you'd get on stage, and this guy would be <laughs> jumping the around like a, a marionette, the ham bone, and he wanted to sing, you know, Johnny, let's do a song, I want to sing. I'm like, well, what do you want to sing? Well, let's do something, you know. <laughs> and, and, and we'd do radio plays live, yeah. you know, with the cupped ear. And the, he just always wanted to, to be an entertainer, keep right. people. He was paranoid. Well, I shouldn't say paranoid. He really wanted to entertain. Well, and, sure. I mean, like, you know what? Every yeah. writer wants their work to be loved. Every performer wants people to like them. What was he like with the crowds afterwards? You know, on those one-on-ones? Because they always come up to you and they want to say hello. Well, he, he started for, uh, I would say, the first 15 years. He would always come out and sign. But... What happened is what happens on the road, especially in the Midwest in Christmas, you mm. know, and it's, you get sick because you're shaking, especially him shaking, you know, thousands of yeah, hands. Yeah, sure. So he stopped doing that. Um, he didn't come up for the last, I think, for the five, last five years of mm -hmm. touring, he did not come back to the, the, uh, the lobby and sign CDs and books. Mm. Um, and people are very, very disappointed because you know that they used to do that. Well, why doesn't he do that anymore? I said, you know, he, he gets sick. Not only that, but he'd be an hour signing yeah, because absolutely. he would have a thousand people. Sure, they'd be lining up. So, but when he was doing that, of course, he was very restrained. He was not the same guy mm -hmm. they saw on stage. You can't it, do that. Is there something that really stands out for you about Stuart a story? I mean, you can't help but be a storyteller just being around a guy yeah. like that. Well, I there's been so many stories of course uh you know when you go on tour yeah. you hear the same story for 30 we, our christmas tour 30 30, 33 when we started out doing those shows chris whiteley and i and, and lisa lindo for a while uh we used to he wanted us on stage behind you know in yeah. three or four of us in seats on the and only lisa this the female singer was able to actually guffaw <laughs> realistically yeah. you know <laughs> Chris Whiteley and I would, after we've heard the same story 20 times, we'd sort of, <laughs> yeah, a little yeah, chuckle. Exactly. And we thought, I said, Stuart, this does not look good, okay? We have to leave the stage. I, I want you there. You know, he didn't want us to leave the stage. Right. But actually it worked out to be a, a better thing in the long run because uh, people were focused just entirely on him than these people in the background. Yeah. And that's the thing about Stuart. What, what I'll remember is that his unerring ability to evolve you know after, after every tour he would know a little bit better about what to do about what to say and this this clip here this that's he and i doing one of our our our, our uh, songs our sort of history of uh you know contemporary yeah. uh, satire 
and he and I would sit down and, and go through all the elements of the year. And this is 2015. This is our last show. And uh, uh, your, uh, Jeff, Jeff Z, uh, was telling me that uh, there was references to Donald Trump mm. in that song. So he must have been topical enough to get in the song. It just shows you how much. But, but Stuart would always, he, we had to keep it positive. You right. know, he was not a negative guy. I want to thank you, John. I, I wish you strength as you remember all of these wonderful stories. And you know what? I just I hope they bring a smile to your face because they that do. would be Stuart. He'd want yeah, that, right? They do. Well, he was a, he was a lot of fun to tour with, and a great man, and a great Canadian. And I, I will miss him, but I but I have many many great memories too. Yeah. I know you will. Thank you, John. Thank you. John Sheard was the music director for Stuart McLean's Vinyl Cafe touring orchestra. Got a reminder for you as well to tune in to CBC Radio 1 this afternoon. We are airing a one hour special. It's called Canada's Storyteller, a tribute to Stuart McLean. You can listen at 1 p.m. local time, uh, 1.30 in Newfoundland.